Welcome to No Crime, No Time community. Just a little chat for everyone. Um, I miss you guys a lot. I've been working a lot of hours in the as a med tech. Um, and then when I'm home, there's a lot more to do because everybody's home. House gets messier, more laundry, you know, normal life. Um, and I have managed to break my two fingers on my right hand. The pinky is for sure is broke. The next one, I'm not sure. So typing isn't as fun. But you guys, I'm in great spirits. I'm here to talk about Ken Kratz, Denny Suspect, and the 24-point conflict. And why I feel that he should literally seriously be taken as a suspect. Hey, Paula. Hey, Justin. Sorry for the delay start. I have a lot going on. So without further to do, let's swing over and start working on that. Um, let me see. I'll adjust this a little bit. Hopefully I can see when you chat. So when you look at King Kratz, he has not only been a part of a murder case, he has been a primary focus and he didn't contain it to just when the case was happening. He contained it nowhere. Like he has, he has went on to his own personal life. It's a, it's ruled his world. It's become who he is, in my opinion, is King Kratz is making a murderer. And so why on earth would we not look at him as a Denny suspect? I mean, what if this was some maniac's idea to gain fame and fortune? Because think of serial killers and the way they thought. They were there to get their fame and fortune in a very sick, perverted way. So we cannot, we cannot just assume because he's a public official at the time of this that he's not going to be checked out. We have to really look at him and say, what all really adds up around him that provides this strange as Justin said, the spotlight. Why is he so drawn to the spotlight? That's a great way to put it, Justin. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Bean Green. Um, and with that, I thought we'd just start listing out. Now, I do these on my own. So uh, I may have missed a billion um, with my work schedule. I'm not always able to devote as much time on these. But these are the things that over the years jump out at me. And he, he provides these all on his own, right? They're not hard to come by. You may know all of these, but let's add them up. Let's really add them up, okay? He has a sexual predator nature. I may have spelled predator wrong. Um, he seems to have a stalking personality if you look at his sexual crimes where his the victim of the guy he's prosecuting of abuse so he's prosecuting this guy for abusing this woman he then as the prosecutor uses his power and authority and his position to then sexed the victim that was just gone through this. That's predatory enough, right? I don't even know how much more you could prove that that is uh, an actual nature of someone. So that bothers me. All right, guys. Represented the prosecution for the state of Wisconsin unethically. There is no way I can have respect for the way he behaved during any of those press conferences. He crossed lines that still to this day, I have yet to see crossed again. Getting on the news and talking to the public with complete lies, convincing the public that there was huge amounts of evidence in the RAV with pools of blood underneath the seat come on just lies evidence tampering all right and it's not just 
a little bit. It's blatantly stated in the castle when Ken Kratz orders the return of barrel number four back to Calumet. So if you're bringing something back returned and you also see it has been collected in evidence previously, he's directly giving an order without reporting that the evidence had been, um, I don't know the legal term, but it's no longer evidence. Okay? It left chain of custody. It left chain of custody. It no longer is evidence. But he doesn't report that. He tampers with it further and just says, bring it back to Calumet. That's huge. And there's others um, in Calumet, other officers that speak of this. They re do reports on this exact thing. No alibi. Okay, he's never given, submitted an alibi for the 31st or any of those days. But yet he has a band named Alibi. Don't you find that strange? I find that very narcissistic. It says, Alipi, this is a newspaper clipping. Alipi performed recently in Green Bay. Let's get it a little bigger so you can get this because we're not making this crap up. Okay, let's move it over here. We'll bring it forward if I can. Uh, here we go, here we go. Okay, Alibi performed recently in Green Bay. Members of the band included Ken Kratz, Calumet County District Attorney, on guitar and vocals. Randy Schneider, Racine County Assistant District Attorney. Also on guitar vocals, Brad Schimmel, Waukesha County Assistant District Attorney on bass. Eric Peterson, Iowa County District Attorney on drums. And lead singer, Heather Zander, a human resources employee at Kimberly Clark Corp. Boys Club. Sweaty Little Boys Club. Right? What do you guys think of that? Mm, I can't stand it. I seriously can't. Okay. Let's look at this. This also was in the paper about his Boys Club. Oh, we got to bring it forward too. I, I've been throwing these together um, literally off the top of my head, so forgive me. Okay, prosecutor, leave the courtroom. Prosecutors, leave the courtroom to rock the bar room. I'm not going to read it, but here's your headline. Alibi. Yeah. All right little narcissistic uh, trip for alibi. And I don't know, it's rumored because it's on the the actual album, album cover, but I don't know if somebody's pulling a joke on that album cover or if it's real, but it says the caption under it, like the subtitle of that um, says, we'll tell, um, we'll tell them you were with us. I find that funny. Okay. Over-the-top, excessive, gruesome details of the murder. I'm telling you, this man went over-the-top in so many gruesome details that it's kind of like you're mesmerized in awe of the repulsiveness of him. And it's hard to actually tune out with the way he tries to hypnotize you into the sweaty man and he just it's like you're reading some gruesome novel he's so over the top it's just impossible not to think that he's delusional literally and I don't know the more details the more you're lying and what did he do he lied to the jury he lied to the jury in so many ways, I can't even begin. If you're a guilter, you know that the jury was completely lied to. You're, you're no longer willing to talk about the bullet because you know what we're going to say, which is the bullet never, ever was the murder weapon. Couldn't be. 
The only thing that that bullet has is victim's DNA. It doesn't have her bone and it doesn't have her blood. You can only test so many forms of DNA. I've said this so many times. You can test for urine. You can test for spit. You can test for touch DNA. What in the world? Did she spit on it, pee on it? What? Come on. You can't talk about um, the blood in Stephen's apart, um, trailer as a guilter. Because you know there, there's, where is it? You can't talk about the key because it's a valet key. It's only got Stevens, not the victims. She's supposed to drive that thing for two years. So you can't talk about that because it looks like it was already planted by Lincoln Colburn. Let's see, what else? You know, you really as guilters, it gets to the bones. And we know they weren't burned by the propane tank. They weren't, the body wasn't burned there. It was burned at another location. But King Kratz says Stephen never left that property. Never left that property. So it wasn't him. Ask him. So as a guilty, you're left with the blood and the wrath, and you are constantly want to put on this show that there's no way in God's green earth that we could prove anything different. But I have a question before we go further, and this is a big, big deal. This has been racking my brain for a week. I'm going to take a drink before we start on it. For those of you, we're going to look at two coins real quick. Just a real quick rabbit hole here. Because King Kratz helped fake and frame Stephen, and he targeted Stephen. And he was there on 11-5 on the property. He was becoming the DA that was now getting to be the prosecutor of a case of a missing girl. That's a problem to me. So when you look at that RAV, if there were two, if, if we went, just clear your mind, think of two RAVs. I have a question. If that's a fake rav on the Avery Salvage Yard, why would there be a bloody handprint on it? If it's staged, why would they stage a bloody handprint on it? They have complete control in this scenario to remove all other handprints from that. So what would be their point unless that bloody handprint represented the person that was flinging the vial of blood in the back accidentally touched the back of the rav and left their own print? However, if that's not a second wrath, we have the killer's handprint. And people still to this day wonder why we don't see that wrath given to Zellner. Because that bloody handprint is absolutely the key. It solves the case. Because if it were to come back to a lab tech with a bloody handprint, game over. Checkmate. If it were to come back to any other person... We have the killer. Checkmate. Game over. So why on earth are we not pressing to get that rav? All right. Now, off that rabbit hole that I went down with you guys because I've been saving it. Um, I was going to do a whole video, but I just run out of time. So there you go. Let's get back to Kratz. Suppressed evidence. Bobby Dassey. CD. He tells <clears throat> Ken Kratz, emails Dean Strait, and says there's nothing of evidentiary interest on any of the CDs from Little Shoot. Blatant lie. Misleads the defense. Suppresses the evidence. And protects a Denny suspect. Number nine. Use suspect as star witness to sell a story. Are you serious? He takes the two primary suspects, Scott Tadich and Bobby Dassey, and he turns them into witnesses. He manipulates so well that he gets the defense to do a handshake to agree the defense that the initial establishment of the identification of the victim the foundation of the identification of the victim would not require any medical paperwork whatsoever or anything tangible other than this man's handshake to say it is so. And look where that took us. Now we don't even know if the victim is dead or alive. 
Somebody, I challenge you, prove it either way. Prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt either way, whether the victim is alive or dead. We have crafts to think for that. Seriously, we do. Because he has stayed in this like a puppet master. And he's working the crowds. And he's working the juries. And he's working the media. And he's working the victims. He's deceitful. And he's involved in the case when the victim is only missing. Why is that possible? Well, well take me through that, somebody. At what point does the DA... On the second day of the report that the victim's missing, on within 48 hours, when does the DA ever in history take part in assembling a team of judges, prosecutors, and so forth to prosecute a suspect that hasn't even been named yet? Why is he not looking for the victim if he's out there? Roll up his pants legs and get part of that search team going. Why is he having meetings with judges and stuff to become the prosecutor? Why is he involved in a missing person's case at all? I don't understand. The question would be, he would be if he was a family friend or something, of course. But he's admitted drug addict. You know, he's come forth. He's like, told us. He's got a very dark history that he was an admitted drug addict. Drug addict. And once a drug addict, we all know it's like alcohol. Those individuals are consistently fighting this battle. It's a lifelong battle. That's why we as support members have to be strong and support them. They're never recovered. So he's a drug addict. We know this. Yet, he hand signals and interferes with eyewitness testimony to shut up with a finger across the lips there to Scott Tadich. Controlling the puppet master, pulling all the little strings. What all is he really involved with? How far back does this really go? He's still currently injecting himself into the case even when later Brendan might actually have a chance at clemency he butts in the case a controlled he he wants complete control of every angle how about that email that TH got from a kin you treat me better than my mama you know um Sounds like it's about porn. She happens to take pictures of nude people. So does her her co-partner, Tom Pierce, at his studio. Kins into bondage. It's just all starting to kind of get a little thick and hot in the kitchen for Ken. And it's only going to get worse as we start looking at more and more of these connective points. So in the past, we've looked at them individually and we bring up one point or two. But are you seeing this picture of this human being? The email to Colhane, where he's talking about, he won't, they're very careful. Now I'm paraphrasing, but he states uh, to Colhane an email that he's being very careful not to come right out and state that the bones match Miss Halbach. However, what the public's perception is, is is what it is. How convenient, huh? But Sheriff Pogo came straight out and said, the FBI said that Teresa Halbach matched those bones. But we know that's not true. We know now that it was seven loci. And with seven loci, now they need like 21. Come on, seven loci means that half of Calumet is going to match that and they can't rule Teresa out. Half of, they're all related, so whatever. He was definitely into um, submissive and domination and BDSM and 
possibly gore, um, Gorian background or something on line play because he was very um, master and slave type personality throughout this entire thing. And the outlandish stories and expressive stories he would tell the jury just went on for days to wear them down and brainwash them into this scenario that has no evidence to back it. What was interesting is he knew from the get-go he would gain promotions, he would gain fame, and he would gain money because he was he was choosing uh, uh, to pick his challenger that was in the nation's eyes. He already knew that his target that he was gunning for was famous. Stephen Avery was making news. He was shaking hands with senators. He was in a spotlight. This would be a case that no matter what, and apparently he didn't care what he looked like as long as he got the fame. And go back to the beginning of this video. I talked about how, you know, serial killers look for that kind of fame. It's a sick, twisted, depraved mind that will behave as a predator on humans. And what are we looking at already? And we're at only 17. Let's keep going because I do have to be done to go to work today. So we'll keep going. Affiliated with yes. Look it up. Do your own research. Don't come and ask me where I got that from. It's out there. You can Google it today. Ken Kratz was on the board of yes. And they ended up making the missing poster that was dated 110205, the day before she actually gets reported missing. So how in the world do they come up with that date? Interesting enough, in 2003, he gets his band photos made. Pierce happens to be Tom Pierce, the photographer, Teresa's partner. He happens to be advertising for bands. And he donates. Tom Pierce donates. Let's get this on top again. Oh, let's see. What do I got to do to get it to... Um, I got to get a hold of it. There we go. Let's bring it up so you can see this. I moved it up. Oh, I got to move it on top. All right. We'll get this. We'll get this. Like I said, it's just thrown together. So... This is a actual piece of tax paper. This shows Pierce Photography in the middle there donating to Citizens for King Kratz in 2008. Yes, I just truly do. Let me see here. Let me get this. I jumped off track for a minute. So I think... That's 14. What one am I on? 19. Yeah. We'll go to the top. There. Fixed it. Like I said, sometimes this jumps out of order. Okay. Number 20. 11.5 claimed victim's blood was in the RAV on live TV. Pools of blood in the back of the RAV. My call bot comes on. The victim's brother. And says he was relieved, now I'm paraphrasing again, he was relieved to note that there seemed to be no harm noted within her vehicle that had been found. Nobody else spoke of knowing of blood in that RAV but, but Ken. Only one. How's he, how's he even know that? She, she's just a missing girl. But he knows it. But the crime lab doesn't announce it. Till the 6th. How's he know that? And he's even wrong. He just lied about it. There was no pools of blood. But he did know there was blood in the back, right? Offered two, di two different narratives at the trials. Goes to Stephen's trial. Tells a whole different story when he goes to Brendan's trial. Which technically, if you look at it up, if you seriously dig into it and research it, Zellner has stated that is not supposed to be allowed. Uh, 
Okay, let's see here. Book. King Kratz claims in his book, Karen Halbach knocked on his door the morning of 11-3 to report her daughter missing and ask for his help. Excuse me, it was after 2 p.m. on the 3rd that was reported this phone call of Karen Halbach calling in to dispatch. So, Ken, either you're lying in your book which makes you a liar, which we know you are. Um, or is this why you were involved in the case so early on? Did you know, Teresa? Is that why Karen would knock on your door? Do you and Karen have a past um, business relationship or personal relationship? Or did you just know the family? Or did you know Teresa? Is it possible that she took photos for you? I'm just saying. Are you the one that emailed her? Because you targeted and you framed two innocent people knowing so. You blatantly knew better. You still know better today. The truth is out there. We all know the truth. And you're still forging this lie that even you know better. And you contacted Stephen in prison wanting to collaborate and represent him in a story. How disgusting to reach out to someone whose life you took away knowing they did nothing wrong to gain fame. Another predatory thing. So, there it is, you guys. That's what I came up with. Um, I really want to thank all of you for those of you that can't stay throughout the chat itself. And I'm going to switch over now to the chat, but I want you to know, like I said, um, I'm trying really hard to stay in the game here with you guys. I am working a lot of hours. I supported Mammothon as much as I could. I jumped on the last few moments. I want to say hats off to Millbilly's channel. The information given from Ness, the dog tracker, was very, very good. I appreciated the fact that as I would type a question, you guys were actually already asking it so I could delete my question, just wait for the answer. And you caught a lot of the good questions and made sure the audience had a voice and it was really well done. As well as hats off to Eric Cozy and that whole crew and everybody that participated in the Mammothon, including um, Andrew Whitehead, really, really enjoyed the part that I did catch there. And um, just everybody, I would have loved to have been more part of it. But with the hours I'm keeping, it just wasn't something I could do. I continue to work with Corey. Um, I do want to clear it up a little bit. Corey does not have direct, tangible evidence that is hardcore that we can hand you that says Scott Tadich worked with the police to kill Teresa Halbach. He has evidence of the blueprint, the way the police treat people. Um, he has his own paperwork of the hell they've been through. Everything he's saying about his case is 100% true. And he has tried many times to work with Scott and Barb, and Scott has been making sure that does not happen. And he stands in the way of getting help to Barb so that Barb knows their family's not alone. Um, so it's not just Corey, Stacy's going through a lot. So we're going to be digging very deep into their story. And I welcome you to visit and travel their journey as they express to us in a later video um, of the hell they've been through because the paperwork shows they didn't make this crap up, but it is so strange to hear the targeting happening to another family the way that they did Stephen. And see, it's the same individuals, the same names again. So we go Ben Bedink, we go Avery, we go Zipper, you know, we go um, Skinner. There's all these cases. Botwell complained, Carmen complained that she was being targeted before she died. Um, Grimm, Steve Grimm complained he was being targeted. You know, this, this all is getting to be too coincidental. Can't be happening like that. So I join you to dig in with me on um, going through the Zipper story as they share their heart and soul with us um, because 
it's a hard one to listen to and not feel like um, another moment of this has got to stop. This absolutely has got to quit. But um, anyway, let's jump over because I want to go to top side and uh, let's see if I can leave this other picture like this. Let me see if I can get to the top side. I did it. Kind of, kind of. We'll fix it. Yeah, I've got about 10 minutes before I've got to jump off here. So I don't have a long, long, maybe 20 at the most. And I want to visit with you guys. So I just want to say hello to everyone in one fell swoop. And thank you for joining me. Um, Sean says Kratz seems to have defined himself as the guy who nailed Stephen Avery. Very good point. Why we need to focus on King Kratz and really ask some of these questions why is he playing a puppet master's role? Hi, Liz Schultz and Connie Williams. Good to see you. And Ernie Coble, good to see you. And uh, let's see, Darcy Becker. Creepy Kratz. Good live chat, RD. Thank you. Justin says, yeah, it makes it seem like he is the one that cares about Teresa Halbach. When he said, little girl, did you guys not feel a moment of Uncle Bad Touch? Okay. When he called Teresa a little girl, I felt like a moment of Uncle Bad Touch. Seriously. It, it was, yeah, as Darcy says, creepy crats. Um, hey, Corey, good to see you join. Shane Carla says, crats, narcissistic idiot. Wobbla says, good afternoon, RD and everyone else. Let's get into this. <laughs> That's how I felt. Uh, Justin said, if you like us, hit the D leave your DNA on the button. Thank you. Gloria, good to see you. She says it makes her blood boil. Kratz does. Susan, hi. Basically saying the barrel had been processed and no evidence value, right? And then we're talking about barrel four. So barrel four was actually collected and brought away from the property and taken to Calumet. It was sitting on a trailer. That trailer returns to the property, comes back with a completely different numbered barrel but does not return with barrel four. I actually have this video out there. You can check it out for more details. But Ken Kratz makes a statement, an order to the troops to go retrieve barrel four again. See, it's the word again. And bring it back. And so that, knowing that that evidence has left chain of custody and is being collected again and being brought back in, you know the evidence has been tampered with and you're, you're, you're facilitating that event. You're encouraging it and you're relying on it, which means it's tampered evidence and that makes you guilty of tampering with evidence to continue, especially if you're in the position of as prosecutor. You're very well aware that that evidence risks contamination and can no longer be used and it could actually throw out the entire trial, okay, if it's used and then it's found out during trial. So that's something that's very wrong. And he fully admits to this procedure in the CASO, according to the reports. Um, let's see here. Thank you, Shane, for leaving your sweaty DNA. <laughs> Okay, Susan says the judge should have not allowed that to happen. And Gloria says, with all the gruesome details he made up, you can only imagine what goes on in his head. I do not even, I can't, I don't want to. Susan says the jury was not only lied to, they were bought. Yeah, um, when you have Manitowoc um, volunteer deputies that are working for a county um, that's being sued 36 million on the jury of the person that is charged with this gruesome crime. Did you, you know, what, I mean, what's the definition of conflict of interest? There should be that definition in the book, really. Corey Zipper says, King Kratz is part of the diabolical group of cops and off of, uh, blah, 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 officials that make up a pornographic ring in the area. Now, you guys, I'm telling you, Corey's not just slinging mud. 
there listen to Dave Bogota talk about these porn off, pornographic photographs and look at the Bambi keys and some of these cops come from Milwaukee to Calumet and vice versa and sneaking a drink this is getting to be too real Bean Green says it would be more difficult to find a time when he told the truth. And at this point, would you recognize the truth if it came from some individual such as this? Gloria says, quote, special prosecutor. Susan wants to know whose bloody handprint. Thank you. Me too. Get the RAV. Get that swab. Put it in the codex. Let's go. Right? It's either the person that planted the rab and this whole thing is a fake scenario and it's the person that slung the blood in the back of the rav. It could very well be that. Or it's a person that got cut planting the rav on the fake rav scenario. Or if you're the one rav theorist, it's the killer's handprint or the accomplice to the killer because they got their hand bloody doing it. So you got one way or the other, but you have one result. You see, we meet in the middle. It's the key to the case. It's the identity of who we need because it can't be both. You can't have it both ways as, as um, Butin said or Strain said. I can't remember. Both of them said it. You can't have it both ways. It can't be the, the person slinging blood in the back of the rav or the person moving it. or And it can't also be the killer Unless there's some weird coincidence. I think it's one or the other. So if you're going with the two RAV theory, really work through why on the fake RAV we have a bloody handprint. And walk through that and explain that out to me. And if you're going with the one RAV theory and that's, well, that's the killer. Why have we not as a society been demanding the RAV like I see one individual every day demands the RAV? And I support her every time I'm on there and see it. Um, that's on Twitter. And it's Miss Piggy. She's just like, Cher, we need that RAV. We need that RAV. Why? It's the key to the case, you guys. It'd be done in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And the beauty, it's not Stephen or Brendan's handprint. It's over. Right there. That should let them out. I mean, honestly... But let's go ahead and see what's going on. Sorry to be on my rant box today. I just missed you guys. Haven't been able to do my normal little rants and stuff because I'm gone so many hours. And I wanted to kind of hit on this point about what's going on in my head and get you guys thinking about it too. A23 is that handprint. Sherry Colheim from the crying lab says that she took a, a sample. It was only a partial sample. Why? There is so much DNA there. And there's a fingerprint in it, too. It's not just the DNA we'd have. It looks like a fingerprint. You'd have this story right there. All right, let's keep going. Justin says, even if the key was planted, so much more evidence. However, the rest of the evidence has been debunked. So what's the story now? Hey, Kimmy Monster, good to see you. I just love that name. I do. Good to see you. Uh, Susan wants to know who says Zellner hasn't seen the RAV. Well, according to her, she didn't. But she says she knows for a fact it's there. Well, it's time to get that sample. Let's just move along and get that sample right away. Wobbla says, well, the victim is alive. Well, somebody prove it. I mean, legitimately bring us, bring us something. But do not violate anybody's personal safety or privacy to do that. I'm just saying, you know. There should be proof already. Bean Green says that should have to do with proof beyond a doubt. Yep. Um, then there wouldn't be this uncertainty. Oh, I agree. And that's where we're talking about that pap smear and how Ken Kratz shakes hands with the prosecution. But no paperwork gets submitted from any medical um, place. No corporation of any kind. There's no paperwork just associated with this pap smear at all. It's just a pap smear submitted and King Crash shaking the hand saying, you won't dispute where the pap smear come from or bring it up, please. Right? 
And Dean Strain says, we'll give you that. Or Jerry Beauty, one of them, the defense. At what point would you have thought to even dispute it at that point? But still, paperwork should have been handled properly. We wouldn't be in this damn mess. We'd be so much further knowing one way or another. Kimmy's mindset, or Kimmy Monster says, KK was the one whose mindset for bondage. Yeah, that's, um, SDE Duck says, very shady person. Wobbler says, because they knew they wouldn't find a body. Okay. I mean, there is a theory I've heard many times, I've even walked it myself, that if the original killer did kill Teresa Halbach, they would have to get rid of the body. And a lot of people say, well, no body was found. Well, we've got the Sikiki note coming out before anybody really knows in the public what's going on, which tends to lead us to believe there's something to the Sikiki note, which we have a video on that too. And in the Sikiki note, it says body burned at 3 a.m. Friday morn. And it says body burned in aluminum smelter Friday morn, 3 a.m. Okay. You look at Scott Tadich, all of a sudden he's working at an aluminum smelter, graveyards. So is it, you know, is it possible she's dead and we just don't have the body? Yeah. Um, but it also leaves, what if she never died too? There's no way to prove right now. Um, Gloria wants to know why KK was at... Um, why was King Kratz at the Avery Salvage Yard? Why would a prosecutor, a DA, go right to a missing person's search, but not help the search? Why would they be on that property at all? Yeah, I am too. Barb says, hope there is good news soon. No, it's coming. Yeah. Kimmy says, what was the cell phone stuff he was involved with? Sexting a victim that was abused. He was prosecuting the bad guy that um, hurt the victim. Ken Kratz was prosecuting the guy. And then Ken Kratz contacted the victim herself and was using his power and authority to bully her sexually in a way and um, got caught. And then there was many other cases, but the state helped cover it all up the best they could. Um, Wabla says he can go to ASA or ASY at any point because the suspect lived there. Yeah, but Wabla, no charges were filed at that time. Stephen wasn't considered arrested and there were no charges till the 9th. King Kratz was on an innocent person with no charges against them. The DA needs to establish why he was on the property 1105 when the victim still considered missing. Why was he in the picture? Kimmy Monster wants to know. I do too. Bean Green says, um, That was so shady when he gave those hand signals. Yeah, the signal to shut up by putting your finger across your lips when Scott Tadich is telling about the fire getting up to the garage. Um, Scott Tadich is just spinning the web. Kratz is trying to get him to calm it down and, and stuff with hand signals. Shane Carla says the only cell Kratz should see is it should have bars. Yeah, and Justin points this out. So not only did we have the two trials with different scenarios, he had changing testimony on witnesses on the stand. So what was interesting, I know you were talking about, Justin, in that moment, you were referring to King Kratz putting his finger up, adjusting, you know, affecting the witness on the stand. I get it. But also King Kratz not only did that, but he allowed two different witness stories per trial. So in one story, Karen Halbach testifies that she was at her father's birthday party, her dad's birthday party, the week before Halloween. 
The next one she testified, it was the Sunday before Halloween. You see where I'm coming from? If it was the week before, if we would have went with Brendan's trial and it was the week before, then they had not seen the woman, the victim, the mother had not seen her daughter for eight days. Whereas if you look at the other case where the Sunday before Halloween, she had not seen her in three days, four days, difference. And there's a lot of little things if you pay attention to the two different cases where King Kratz even, even moved the witness's testimony around to fit a story he was building. Control of everything. Everything. Corey says there is good news coming. Many people were murdered. Several people entrapped. All coming to light soon. Um, I personally don't know of many people n murdered yet. Maybe there's something more Corey has planned on sharing with me. Um, but Corey tends to um, want to share a lot of the story really quick. Whereas I am walking through the actual details of it and like I said I see his scenario and how rotten it was and we have a lot of proof on his case but as far as related to the Avery case it's it's not related it's unrelated in the sense of there's nobody in the Avery case where a lot of people were murdered so don't he doesn't necessarily understand to clarify so I just want to bring that up and um go from there so Corey will be sharing his story and uh, with Stacy as well and we'll be showing some of the paperwork we have already begun to upload those into file sharing on no crime no time .org. Kimmy monster said he was a submissive not a master or dumb well he's behaving in the public um, in a submissive way because of the fact that there's a puppet above him, a puppet master above him. And he is being, his strings are being pulled. And I believe that's true to this day, in my opinion. X Nos wants to know, does Ken have an alibi? Never put one on record. No known alibi for King Kratz for any of that time frame. Darcy Be Becker asks, Kratz creepier than I knew should be locked up. Bean Green says, I sure hope so. It's about time at Corey Zipper. Sunny Bimbo says, two days before a law was going to be named after him. I find that so hard to believe that Stephen would do a murder. Me too, Sony. Me too. Kimmy Monster says, KK wanted fame. And I think he wanted um, control. I think he enjoyed this attention at some level that we don't even understand. And Kratz was jealous of S.A. Gloria says, and you see that in that ply to get Stephen to work on a book with himself. <coughs> Thank you, Tom, for inviting us to your channel. I appreciate that. Wabla says February 21st will show everything. Well, Lord have mercy. I hope we don't have to wait till next year. I don't know. I just hope we don't have to wait that long. Kimmy Monster says he put himself into it and he must know what's up. Darcy says Stephen tr totally entrapped. And that's what Darcy and um, Corey and Stacy are going to be expressing to you guys and sharing is their entrapment and the story that they've been through. It's very heartbreaking that two very young lives got basically railroaded into hell's gates. And to this day, they suffer a lot of um, confusion and targeted and false reports being created when that's not what happened, you know. 
Um, and when you have eyewitnesses and three people say, no, that isn't what happened. That report doesn't match anything, even remotely close. You start looking at it and seeing that Calumet it has trained King Kratz because King Kratz wrote the story that convicted Stephen Avery. But it wasn't the truth. And who helped him write that story was Calumet County. And they wrote a zipper story for the zippers. So I am really looking forward to us being able to dig into that. But we're getting there. It's taking time. It's a lengthy story. We want to hit the the most important parts and we want to do it with due diligence to make it uh, really share the points that you guys can connect the dots to and say what in the hell is with Calumet so um, let's go along here I'm gonna skip it a little bit so if I don't read everything I apologize I've just got to speed up the time because my work um, alarm is gonna go off in a minute Justin says um, why you look at his book, he has animosity for Stephen. Stephen is getting the attention and the spotlight that he wants for himself. Uh, Lottie Maria, I hope I said that right. Luda Maria, I apologize if I'm saying this wrong. Hello from Australia. Keep doing what you were doing. Great work. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Bean Green says, what? He said she knocked on his door? Yeah, in his book. Yeah, in Kratz's book. He claims that Karen Halbach came to his door on 11-3 in the morning and knocked on his door. That was right out of his book. Darcy wonders if the judge is corrupt. Two different complete stories from Ken. Why allow it? I agree. Um... Yay, we have uh, Mary Ann Delaney. Good to see ya. She made a live. Patrick says, greetings from Thailand. Hi, Patrick. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Shane Carla says, I'm still waiting for the original Exhibit 05. Not sure what that means. Exhibit 05. Um, I kind of remember something, but refresh my memory what that means. Kimmy Monster says King Kratz was a submissive slave and still is. He does fit that profile for sure. Justin says her phone call is at 2.54 p.m. And Kara's dark green search warrant says phone call was 5 p.m. And Kara's blue. And King Kratz says that Karen knocked on his door that morning. His door. So, yeah. Really? And the missing posters dated the 2nd. So... It, it's nothing is the truth in the case so st duck says um keep up the good work thank you let's see i'm just jumping ahead a little because like i said I don't want to miss the important ones. Rachel says 36 million reasons to frame him. Zero reasons for Steve Avery to murder her. You know, Rachel, that, that really says it all. Mind Shock's here. Hi, hi. Good to see you. I love all your programs. Thank you so much um, for doing what you do. High, high respect. Mind Shock says less than zero for SA to murder TH. A man with no money to gain has zero reasons. SA had 36 million reasons not to do anything even closely resembling, resembling illegal. That's an excellent point. Kemi Monster says just the part when is, uh, when is said they got into my head. Yeah, when Brendan, poor Brendan says that, it just breaks my heart. Um... Mind shock says common sense test for adults. Absolutely. Rachel says the amount of corruption is terrifying. Mind shock says what's more terrifying, the amount of corruption or the amount of people denying the corruption. The people denying the corruption, please. It's like if we can prove a piece of paper where somebody was speeding and is 
arrested and is thrown into a 30 or a um, three day hold, a 72 hour hold, if we have that piece of paper, people will actually be like, oh, wow, I just couldn't believe they would do that. Yet the paper shows they do and it's attached to a whole bunch of stuff. If you don't have that piece of paper, you got to put your tinfoil hat on because that just would never occur. But yeah, when we get into the Stacy and Corey Zipper case, you're going to find out that does happen. And we have the paperwork to prove it. And what county? King Crass's County, Calumet. And he was the DA of that county for a long time. And Mark Rohr was the Manitowoc County's DA for a long time. And look at these two, these two individuals and really taking into consideration these 24 points, what kind of a human being are we looking at that is up there putting away the criminal? Prosecuting people that we find out aren't criminals. Because in the court case, you have a criminal and you have an innocent person. That's how it should work. But when the prosecution is a criminal, what you get is the balance is that the individual is innocent. And we have criminal for the state prosecutor. So let's continue on here. Shane Carlos says the original photo of Teresa and the RAV4 was never entered into court. And I asked the same as Rachel. I wonder why that is. That's interesting. Kevin says Kratz has total immunity, can do and say whatever he likes. I just, I can't, I'm, the Red Killer says denial is deadly. Shane Carla says there is no original photo at Rachel. That's interesting. That would be weird to find out. I mean, if that's true, yeah, that's creepy as crap. If there's no original photo, then it's just a complete made up shot. It is weird though, because we did go to the actual spot where the photo supposedly took place. Um, and the place does exist. I, I stood on it with the other researchers, so we know the location is a legitimate location. Um, there is a story that Tom Pierce took the photograph, allegedly. Justin says, I'm starting every day tweeting Governor Evers, suggest others should do the same. Thank you so much, Justin. You hear that? That's a great way to do it. We need to see tweets all over the place for Governor Evers to pay attention, or Evers. It just seems like he's taking forever, so I keep saying Governor Evers. I know it's Governor Evers. Um, Thread Killer says, I've always said I felt Brendan's confession was sweaty congrats, sick fantasy. Second that emotion. S.T.E. Duck says, can't believe this is still going on. S.A.M.B.D. should have been free. Only in America, the land of the free. No justice at all. I know, love. I know. We need justice reform, Justin said. Kimmy Monster says, the jails might be empty if you look into more cases, more lawsuits. You know, Kimmy, you could be right, but... Uh, we may have to do that, you know? What do you guys think? What do you want to do here? I mean, I get that we're in a holding pattern for the state, but we should be looking to help somebody else that we can. And I don't necessarily mean high profile. I'd prefer it not in the state of Wisconsin, so it protects me a little bit, not to be in the heart of it. But if you guys do want to look at a case, start messaging me or tweeting me. Connect me a little bit to direct us as a community what do we want to do next because we'll stay with Stephen we're going to keep doing this but there's times where we have you know we can only say so much right now um, as we get more information on Stephen's case of course we're going to be on top of it and we won't hold we won't lose any footing and we're still going to be doing different 24 point conflicts and so forth but I also want 
to do like Kimmy Monster says. Spread our wings a little bit. See if we can help somebody else that really, really, maybe the prosecution just didn't do a thorough job. Maybe they are on the up and up and maybe we can find that footing to give the straighten the situation out. We're all great detectives here and we pay attention to a case. So where are we heading? You know, Don Ethan says, if COA finds just one Brady, oh, clerk of courts finds just one Brady, will it stop there or be forced to go through and educate based on Stephen Avery, Casey, entire brief? I don't know, Don. I'm not a legal person, so I don't want to answer, um, but I want that question heard so that somebody with that legal, whether it be Travis or or whoever is available, that would know that answer, I would prefer them to address that so I don't misquote. Shane Carla says a law was created to protect the rich from the many poor. Kevin says, I think the system just likes to lock people up. Well, private, um, believe it or not, private prisons do make money. So that's something to keep in mind with. Also, the crime lab, lab makes money if there's a conviction of guilt. They don't make uh, their money if they don't convict. So, Kimmy Monster believes that Teresa was killed because the picture she took. Um, Thread Killer says, did TH have a Facebook account? A photographer would have had a ton of pictures. Amen. There you go. That's a great point. Rachel says, Justin, problem is they don't want justice reform. True. Thread Killer also says, plus she was a business. Free local advertising on Facebook. Yeah, something's not right there. Yeah, Thread Killer asked a good question. Wonder what the rules regarding Facebook and the military personnel. Debbie Anderson says, seems we haven't heard about KZ in a while. What's been happening there? Graham Moss, good to see you. Rodney Reed needs help. What do you guys feel? Hit me up. Send me documents. Let's start digging into a case. You know, Rodney Reed needs help. I can stand by uh, Rodney Reed anytime. I have no problem doing so. So if that's the case, um, let me know as a community where you guys want. Kevin says Russia and China like to abuse their citizens. It's a power thing. Yeah, it's it's horrific. I hear horror stories. I, I just pray to God some of them are just media bull crap because if they're true where they're harvesting dogs to eat, I just, I can't mentally handle that kind of crap. So let's end on a good, on a good note. Um, again, thank you to all those that took part of ma'am hats off to all of you. I appreciate it because every time we get Stephen and Brendan's name out there and wrongful conviction out there, it protects them a little further. And I had to step away for work. Um, I was able to hit, like I said, a few videos to where I could participate in the chat. I got to do Eric Cozy's Mill Billy's Andrew Whitehead. Um, there was one more I thought I checked out. I can't remember, but it was just amazing what I was getting to see. And I felt a little jealous because I would get ripped away with work and not be able to like stick and see what all was going on and contribute myself. But, um, everybody did a fantastic job and I personally just think that's wonderful. It shows that as truthers, we are all targeting King Kratz and these liars to, Start owning up to their truths. And the truth is that innocence will prevail. Truth will prevail. Stephen and Brendan are innocent. And if you didn't do a crime, you sure the hell shouldn't be doing the time. I love you guys so very much. And uh, please stay with me. Bear with me. Um, I won't leave you guys. Just like Stephen said, I won't leave you guys. So you guys don't leave me. <laughs> much love, everybody. Bye for now. Stay well.